Yeah, here we are at the rehearsal for uh, all of these shows. Um, Lollapalooza is the big one that I'm really excited about, but we're doing some warm-up dates ahead of time Thursday in San Francisco and Saturday in Pomona. I'm feeling really great about the rehearsals. It gets you not be behind an instrument the whole time, which is such a new thing for me. I'm really excited about you know being able to be in communication with the people in the audience instead of trapped. I think people might be a little surprised to see how much energy is in the live show. Uh, from hearing my voice you might expect a mellow kind of thing but it's not that at all. There's a lot of energy. There's a, a few up tempos that definitely get it going, you know. One of the only features on my album is Marilyn Manson. I'm really, really, I feel honored to have him on my album. He is a true artist and a genius, and I've looked up to him for many years. So the fact that he would um, bless my record with his vocals and words, is, it's, uh, it's kind of surreal. The song is called Can't Haunt Me, and it's about zombies. I reached out to Manson in January after, well, I'd, I'd been kind of nervous to reach out to him before that, even though I really wanted to. But I waited until I had some clout, <laughs> I guess. So through a friend of a friend, reached out to him, and he thankfully took a meeting with me. And ever since then, we've, um, you know, we really hit it off. So I've been working now and again. Well, I was sitting in his house, in Manson's house, and, you know, playing in my record, telling him my story, and talked about how uh, I was thinking of calling my album Invisible because it was the first single and it's a cool word. And uh, my only worry with that was that the whole album kind of tells the story of my transformation into Skylar Grey, which to me is like the superhero version of me. And so Invisible being a weak emotion, I didn't think that would be very strong for, you know, describing the whole album. Um, and so, being the genius that he is, he just said, why don't you just put an N in the word and it becomes invincible spelled wrong. And I was like, duh, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> but yeah, so that stuck. It was so random to receive a call to perform for the Dalai Lama. I didn't know where that came from, but suddenly I was at the Capitol on the lawn singing for this peace event. And I sang a full-length version of Coming Home, uh, which I haven't even recorded yet. It's just something that I had lying around, and I thought it would be very fitting. And I got to meet the Dalai Lama, and he put that white scarf around my neck, and he pulled my hair. He was obsessed with hair. It was so weird. I was hoping that he would, you know, say, touch me and be like, you're the one I've been looking for, and take me back to India or wherever he lives. <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> but no, that didn't happen. He just pulled my hair and said, different color, which I actually got rid of my stripes. Did you notice? Yeah. Yeah. I loved Amy Winehouse for being different and coming out with a unique sound and having such a great, you know, e even though it was short, it was a, a huge impact on music and pop. Unfortunately, you know, addiction is something that I, I don't think a lot of people understand. I don't. But um, it's just really a sad thing. What's up, wrap up? I'm Skylar Gray, and I'm telling you to look out for my album this fall, November. It's called Invincible. Check it out.